General Huda, you were the uh, Army's General Officer Commander-in-Chief of the Northern Command during the famed trans-LOC strikes of 2016 after the Uri attack. What would be your prescription now? The Army is very much involved as we speak. You know, even as the pilot was coming back yesterday, uh, there were, the, the, the line of control was completely lit up across sectors. That's something you're very familiar with. Again, as a military commander, what would your prescription be and what should the considerations be at this sensitive time? Uh, see, you know, I think we need to take some lessons from uh, what happened post-2016. Uh, and we did do a, we did do a strike uh, across the border. Uh, what we saw, uh, unfortunately, was, you know, we've seen a series of sort of attacks that have continued from Pakistan. So are there any lessons that we should actually take from that? Uh, and one major lesson, in my view, is that you need to have a consistent uh, approach and policy towards uh, towards Pakistan. If you're just going to celebrate, you know, one strike and say, uh, this is it. So I don't see uh, how and why uh, Pakistan could change its, its behavior. So in that sense, I think uh, the Indian government's reactions after Pulwama uh, have been uh, much stronger, have been more consistent. Uh, diplomacy has been, you know, more effectively applied this time than, uh, than it was done in the past. Uh, what is it that we, we want, uh, you know, to achieve? And uh, what we want to achieve is that you need to deter Pakistan. I'm, I'm not sure it's going to happen immediately, but we need to deter Pakistan from carrying out, uh, you know, cross-border strikes in India. And so how do we do that? So you have a military option, you have a diplomatic option, uh, you have international sort of leverage. Uh, so decide on a path and say we are going to follow this path consistently uh, over the next few years. Uh, let's not look for short-term solutions. I don't think we will get them. But let's at least have a long-term uh, approach. And if, if the military is, uh, you know, a part of that, sure. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's the main weapon for deterrence. So, again, as I said, you know, a long-term consistent policy is what is going to uh, sort of pay us dividends. Okay, so a consistent strategic objective needs to be uh, on track. It can't be derailed by ad hocism. Uh, uh, Mr. Menon, as you know, a former national security advisor, the, the thing that's been in the headlines, the cover has been the military stuff. We've seen the airstrikes, we've seen what happened in Pulwama, we've seen a pilot coming back, the dogfight. That's what's been in, you know, in, in public view right now. Behind the scenes, of course, there's been a lot of diplomatic pressure. We've read about that as well. That's one of the reasons why uh, this pilot was returned to uh, us very quickly. How do you see uh, our foreign policy objectives? Uh, is there a need for them to change at this point of time? Because we've crossed, like the Air Chief said, we, we've demonstrated our ability to uh, you know, conduct a conventional strike against terror targets. How do our foreign policy objectives vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan need to change now? Well, you know, what you do next depends on what you want. Do you want to change Pakistani behavior? Then there's a whole set of things you do. And there is no either diplomatic or military. None of these alone will work. You need a whole set of things that you do in the way you deal with Pakistan. Or do you want to degrade jaish e mohammed to actually attack them and other groups like them, Lashkar, etc.? Then you have a different set of, of things you do some overlap between the two. Or do you want to win an election? Then there's a whole different, there's still some overlap, but then you, you choose to play it differently. Then you have to do it publicly. Now, the problem for me is that most of the stuff that will actually change Pakistani behavior or degrade Jash, for instance, has to be done covertly, quietly, and is a long-term problem, as General Huda said. It's something you have to do over years, you have to apply pressure, you have to raise costs. What we did this time was good. It showed a will, it also raised the costs. But that's not a solution in itself. It has to be part of a longer term process. But unless you have that clarity of where you want to go, frankly, it's very hard to say, okay, these are the things, prescribe what the things that we should be doing right now. Uh, diplomatically, I think we have and this is part of the issue. We have signaled both things at the same time, that we want to improve relations with Pakistan, but that we will not talk as long as terror is going on, and 
we've said many things. Uh, I know this is unsatisfactory, but you know, you are dealing with many Pakistans. To my mind, there are at least five Pakistans. There's civil society, there's Pakistani business, civilian politicians. You really don't have a problem with them. Your problem starts with Pakistan army, the jihadi tanzims, oppose them, fight them. So you cannot have one policy which deals with all of them. Because if you have one policy, you're pushing the first three into the arms of the others. So for me, you will have the same kind of diplomatic ambiguity, let's say, to put it pol politely, in the way you deal with them. But I think you should measure how far you have succeeded. And this is India succeeding, yes. because it's several years. 50 years ago, the OIC at Pakistani instance wouldn't let you in. In fact, as good as chased you out. Now, your foreign minister has spoken to an OIC meeting, India's foreign minister, made a speech that, by the way, any of India's foreign ministers could have in the last 30 years. And the Pakistani didn't even attend. That shows you how far you've come diplomatically. But as I said, even that is not enough to actually change Pakistani behavior. You need a combination of all these things.